Hey guys, so I got a request and I was to show you guys how to charge a zip or <laughs> a lipo. So uh, this is what I have is an Onyx 5000 7.4 volt, so 2 cell um, you know, 5000 milliamp battery. So this is what I have for a charger here. It's a Turnigy AccuCell 6 and it's powered by a Sky RC 12 volt or 15 volt adapter and that is something that I had to buy separate so input 100 240 volt output 15 volt 5 amps so you need at least 5 amps to do the max of the 5 amps that this thing can do so this is a maximum charge if you can read that right 5 amps maximum discharge once and it can do 5 cycles charge or discharge uh, and then charge it or discharge it opposite or whatever again, right? So they're a little bit intimidating. You have your leads, so your positive and negative, just like a normal battery ones have. And then you have all these things here. Well, it looks like a lot, but really it's the same thing, but just a lot of them. Uh, what it is, is it's your cell balancing uh, cables here. So you have, uh, for a two cell, you have your positive and negative, and you have a negative for the second cell, you know. And then the third cell, you'd have a, another wire, and if you had a four cell, you'd have two more wires, etc., etc. So I have an extension lead, because I found it was a real pain in the ass trying to butt the battery right up to the thing here to charge it. So anyhow, get these guys in here first. Yeah, you doing this one-handed. He's telling me that there's a error. Or oh, I'm pushing buttons. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> all right. So, piece of advice: don't do that. Mine's also wobbly as hell because I've lost a couple of the pads off the bottom. So, my connection comes to this, and then it normally has one of those tarantula connections where you got um, you can switch it out to whatever different kind of battery you want. But, I have a Dean's end, so red to red, black to black, let's put this together. So there we're connected. And then now we gotta take this balance lead, and it's gotta plug into this one here. So you can only do it one way, which, uh, see the connections on top, they make it together. Let's assume I can get it done here. I tried looking for my uh, tripod, no, no dice. So these together click. So normally what I was doing was having to plug this in directly into there and yeah there's no room. So anyhow you want to change your battery type because we're not me uh, nickel metal hydrate or not nickel cadmium. No. So there's NICAD nickel. PB is a lead battery. That was another reason I bought this so I can charge the great big battery I had in my tank. Yeah. Fortunately, I don't know what that does. So we want lipo. But there is NIHEM, NICAD, and lead. So start. We're doing a charge of 5 amps, 7.4 volt, which is a 2 cell. So now because we have that, we could change other stuff. We could balance it, we could fast charge it, we could uh, set it to storage. Um, you gotta set all this stuff, it wants one cell for that. We can discharge it to a safe discharge rate. And discharge. So that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, five amps between this, like if this was completely empty it would take uh, one hour, but um, at five amps. Uh, I'm gonna turn this down a little bit because I want it to go a little take its time. So I'm going to turn this down to 3 amps. So it's a 2 cell. There's 3 cell, 4 cell, 5, 6, <laughs> as high as this goes. And auto, which, you know, it detects how many leads are in here and it goes, but 2 cell, right? So, right? It won't do anything. You have to press and hold And then, here wants to know what you want to do. 
Cancel stop, confirm, enter. Enter! We are now charging. So three amps, and then over here on the right, it even tells me what the voltage is at, and the number that's slowly counting up, that's how many milliamps are going into the battery. I'm gonna go grab my LiPo-safe er, charging and discharging battery, and I'll show you that too. So this is my LiPo-safe bag. It is actually a Kevlar bag. It's all fancy inside and smooth and everything. So the point of this is that you put it inside of this bag when you're charging and discharging. What I'm doing now is a little bit on the unsafe side, but that was another reason to get the balance lead extenders, right? So like this, you take your battery, you place it firmly inside the bag. So I'll turn this a little bit sideways, gives me a little bit more reach. And then you can stick the side of the cables out there and you Velcro this shut and we're now safe. Some people use cast iron pots, stuff like that, not a problem. But don't forget, a lipo fire will not go out with water. You need to smother it. Um, sand, some people take uh, Ziploc bags and just uh, find sand, you know, one on the bottom, battery, one on top. You know, if it catches fire, it smothers itself out, right? Make sure you have enough sand. And uh, I've even seen ones where uh, a guy had his nice laptop sitting here. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, and he set his car on top of the keyboard between heats to charge it again. And while, and then, he, oh, i got to get a drink or something. So he walks away. Things charging away. It <laughs> doesn't know anything's going on. And all of a sudden, woof battery catches fire and it melted down through the car through the keyboard into the table left a hell of a mess killed his laptop killed his car killed his battery and it was a write off they had to call a fire department and everything like that it was a hell of a mess and guess who gets the bill for it he did so um, not fun but anyhow this is all you gotta do to charge your lipo so uh, when this da ding da dings at the end of it here I will show you how much it took and this is after a whole day uh, RC day at the mall there or no RC day at the leisure center the, the great big one that went up on March 2nd I think it was the hour long and something video and the entire video there Alex is driving around my Jeep with that battery in it and we never stopped and charged it once it kept going the whole time so this should take a good charge and there we go. I just did the do 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 sounds. And it tells me that the light bulb is two cells full. So it took 4,379 milliamps into the battery. Uh, give me a second. Okay, there we go. Had a couple customers to deal with. And I used that opportunity to open the bag. Now, this is cool to the touch, it's not even warm. Uh, when you charge a nickel metal hydrates and I ni hems or nicads or anything like that, they seem to get warm. Lipos, nope, they seem good. So all you gotta do is unplug them. And uh, gotta love these cables and stuff. It's always fun trying to get these undone. I can't even do it. <laughs> I don't know how to build does it. Oh, there we go. So yeah, it's just a. Little connection, focus, yeah. There's a little cable connection, and then there's my uh, Dean's ends. That's actually what they're called. And uh, just accidentally unplugged that a little bit when I pulled it. And yeah, just goes to a male one on there, and you can pick whatever you want for female ends and whatever it's got to go to. I have an adapter so it can go to um, Dean's to, to Mia ends for when I use my semi and. Uh, use the Jeep and stuff like that it's really neat and cool I got a bunch of those coming I have a bunch of these ends I am eventually gonna change over everything to these connectors because they're just further far superior the only problem is you find is that you buy stuff on eBay and you don't always get the brand name items it's the style Dean's style or whatever but when you go to a 
this still got the plastic in here when you go to um, solder them on you notice like it's not the dark red like how these are right like these match pretty close right and I got some of the cheap ones off of eBay once they're so bad that the um, the metal itself, you know, you can't really cheap out on that, you can't melt that. But this plastic it's made of is a different kind of plastic. And the stuff I got off of eBay, it just melted. Couldn't believe it. It was just lost cause. So I got some more nylon ones off of uh, Hobby King. And they seem to hold up okay. You just need some solder for sure and uh, be able to work it with you. Oh, soldering iron. I need to get a good one of those someday too. And I just put the charger away, but I figure I'll show you this. So this is my tarantula, they call it. So these plug in to the charger, just like showed you for that Dean's end one. So we have an end here. This is interesting. Just a plug thing here, and it's for a glow starter for nitro. And that's the only way you can get it in there. And all it does is charge one single battery. Uh, here, there's a blank set of leads. You can put whatever kind of special end you need onto there. This little red one here is for a receiver pack, like for radios and stuff. But usually a uh, low voltage or one cell or... Well, I guess some are two cells, I guess, but... You know, low discharge, low charge. They last forever. Uh, a second type, this uh, has a servo receiver kind of end on it. Depends on what you have for plugs. Here we have a Traxxas plug. It still has the cover on it, but it looks very similar to the Dean's except for both blades are on one side instead of uh, one straight and one on an angle. Uh, here's a Dean's plug. It has a cover on it. That's how it looks. Here we go. I can get this off. There, there's a Traxxas. So see, just two on both sides since the end. Instead of having the thing on one and uh, another one at a 90 degree angle. There, I even got it back on. And then a Tamiya connector. And then this guy. These are weird. Um, I can't remember what the name of them is right now. But uh, I know Red Cat likes to use them. And there's somebody else. EC3 it says on the side of that. So I guess that's what kind of connector it is. Never have I ever had anything that uses that connection. See, I can see why they give you a uh, cap to put on the Dean's end, which has a little L shape cut out of it to fit onto here. Come on. There we go. Because you don't want those hitting anything else and sparking or anything like that, right? So there we go. And it all wires up into that. One little tube. And you see there's a couple heat shrinks inside. And that's that. So uh, until the next time, I guess, um, I'll see you guys. If you have any questions, comments, and concerns, put them down below. If there's anything else you guys are wanting to see, like RC-related, whatever, just uh, let me know, and I'll see if I can do it. I just happened to remember about that comment. Uh, sorry, I can't remember who it was that asked about that, but hey, we got her done, and you got a little bonus out of it, too. Mm -hmm.